All right, all. Well, thank you so much for, for uh, your continued attendance. Uh, I, I don't think there's a problem with beginning a little bit early, uh, uh, around two minutes. It's such a pleasure. We've got around 20 or so people currently in the, in the, in the chat. I think for the sake of recording, I'll go through. We've got myself, Zachary Beyer, uh, current president of the Archaeological Society, uh, Dr. Renee Nelson, so current we have vice president. With Sancho and um, we have I'm and sorry. Zach, we'll find us somebody. Um, John, I think I'm I'm Teresa hearing John, something. Right. And John, um, then. All right, John. Dennis thank you. Carter. No. We've tried we to find somebody for French. Um, You've been muted, John, so just let you know. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Zachary Beyer, current president of the Archaeological Society, uh, Dr. Renee Nelson, current vice president of the Archaeological Society, Miss Ashley Jones, uh, current secretary of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, um, uh, Diane Golden Frankson, current uh, treasurer of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. I th think I've hit all the officers. Uh, thank you for your presence, but we also have Angelique Mullings, floor member of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, Clive Gray, floor member of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, David Elliott, uh, floor member, student representative of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, John Shorter, floor member, Archaeological Society of Jamaica, Susan Francis Brown, immediate past president and part of our board on the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. Um, uh, Professor James Robertson, uh, 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 not only an immediate past president, but a current floor member uh, of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. All I, I apologize if I've forgotten anybody. We've got Javier Gordon, who currently serves on the, the social media subcommittee. Uh, thank you for your presence. Uh, and alongside our board members, I am pleased to note the presence of, of Mr. Ainsley Enriquez, honorary member of the ASJ, a uh, long-standing supporter of, of Jamaican archaeology, history, and heritage. Thank you for your presence today. Uh, I'm noting the presence also of Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones, who we will uh, honor later on in this, in today's session. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Allsworth Jones, for your presence today, um, uh, as well as other friends and, and, and uh, supporters of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. Welcome all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your attendance. Uh, I just want to uh, begin uh, with a special thanks to our webinar participants. What a treat that was. Uh, I thought it was a, a spot on session uh, reflecting some current advanced research. Thank you so much to the members of the executive committee of the ASJ who have who assisted with all of the events uh, uh, following our, you know, the essential closure of face to face interaction. Uh, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, I, I can't underscore enough that anything I have to say today is the product of uh, the combined efforts of, of uh, the ASJ board and, and our, our subcommittee members over the last year. So today I'm tasked with providing you an overview of the work that the society has done in the past year, a year that has challenged and changed so much of our worlds and our human experience as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The ASJ has attempted to meet the challenges, uh, challenges of the day, which have, have exposed new opportunities to meet our key objectives. We recognize there's still much to be done and we are committed to the path forward. Um, oops, how about I do that? Looking at the beautiful site of, of White Marl. So our objectives remain the same, albeit with some new sets of challenges uh, 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 arising from the COVID pandemic, our objectives remain the same, to locate, study, preserve Jamaican archaeological and historic sites and material, to promote interest in and appreciation of Jamaica's archaeology, to coordinate field work, organize field trips, lectures, and conferences, to, pub to publish the Society's newsletter, Archaeology Jamaica, and other academic publications and proceedings to promote publications of articles relating to Jamaican archeological heritage, like the work that we heard about today, to facilitate integration between members of the ASJ, 
as well as members across our sister societies. I'm thinking of the Georgian Historical Society, uh, the Georgian Society and the Histor Jamaican Historical Society, as well as to exchange information with universities, museums, and other institutions and persons in Jamaica and overseas having an interest in archaeology. Before I proceed any further, my vice president yesterday uh, reminded me that we've got to review minutes from uh, our last AGM. So that was the 2020 AGM that, that was a difficult symposium. Let's, let's be frank about it. Uh, uh, we, uh, we were set up uh, within the space of the library and attendance very challenged, uh, uh, membership renewal very challenged because of the uh, uh, because of fear of the COVID pandemic and because of new social distancing measures that I think really came into effect on the second day of our symposium. So it was a challenge, but please, I, I, I wanna give everyone just a couple moments and I hope the minutes are clear on the slide. If they're not, please one of my board members let me know and I'll, I'll switch documents uh, to the actual document that I can zoom in on. But do let me know if these minutes, it's just a page and a half, are clear and I'm looking for someone to confirm and second these, uh, these, uh, these minutes. And just remember only people that can vote in the AGM in reality attend the AGM, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna kick anybody out. We want everyone's support, but you have to be a paid member in order to vote. That includes on elections as well as other society business. So can I all have your, uh, 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 your attention for a few moments as we review and confirm these minutes, please. Oh, Susan Francis Brooks, that, 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 that is a mistake. Uh, what, uh, let me follow second to last paragraph. Yes, thank you, Wendy, for catching that. Uh, Ashley uh, Jones, I imagine you're in the audience. I'm going to take a note, but I'm, I'm hoping you'll also take a note of the spelling of Susan Francis Brown's name, the second paragraph to the end. Any other comments? Zach, can you pull yep. your picture from this? Because the type is too small. Oh, yeah. Today. Well, let me, I think I've got to, let me stop my video. Does that help at all? That's no, all we get is a mugshot. Uh, Robertson, look on your screen. Um, you're going to see like, uh, hover over the screen. You're going to see like a line popping up like in the center of the screen. Just hold on to the line with the mouse and move it to what is this, the right, to, to, to expand the screen. Try that. Next week, thanks, uh, Vene. Next week, training wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you. All right, Prof. Thank you for confirming. All do let me know if there are any other uh, any other edits, uh, and if not, just let us know that you're. You, you support the minutes in the chat and ideally I can get someone to, to confirm and second these, these minutes that thank you Susan Francis Brown and Ashley Jones uh, for, for putting these together. All right, Diane, can I have you confirm the minutes then, DGF, or distinguished treasurer? Yes, I confirm. All right, can I get a second? Whenever you all are, are done, anyone feels second comfortable seconding? Minutes. Angelique, thank you very much. All right, now that that business is done, I do just wanna go through the role quickly so we can have it recorded. Uh, myself, Zachary Beyer, Renee Nelson, Angelique Mullings, Ashley Jones, Clive Gray, David Elliott, John Shorter, Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby, Susan Francis Brown, not Brooks, Brown, uh, Andrea Richards, Diane Golden Frankson, Dr. Alan Weiss, welcome Al, 
uh, Dr. Brittany Osborne, uh, Darren Court, welcome. Uh, Prof. James Robertson, Javier Gordon, Laura Lee Martin, Michelle Topping, uh, Dr. Philip Osworth Jones, Romaine Thomas, Rosie Ruth, Sylvia Cohenberg, Simon, Yolanda Lindsay, welcome Yolanda, uh, Clive Gray, and Doreen Patterson, welcome, welcome all. So, Hi, Zach. hey John, are you with us? Yeah. Finally. Okay, good. So good. I missed the well, I know, symposium, but I'm here to vote. Uh, you missed a good one, uh, but glad to have you here, John, and thank you for all your help getting this organized today. John was led the way in terms of setting up registration and uh, flyers, a, a variety of business. But anyway, let's, let's talk about our business. Uh, beginning in the summer of 2020, we began, uh, uh, we, we took a hard look at our constitution uh, uh, with the idea of, of, of revising and maxim in order to maximize the utility of the ASJ. It was last revised in 2009. And for our members that are familiar with the constitution, we're not talking about major issues here. Uh, uh, Ruth, thank you. Ruth Mitchell, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. And if I uh, uh, didn't pronounce anyone's names right or didn't note a last name, please, please uh, correct me in the chat, all right? And, and thank you all for your attendance. We, we initiated this, this review beginning during the summer, so right after uh, our March 2020 symposium. Some of the primary issues include amending phrasing and use of gendered pronouns. This is quite a, oh, Rosie Dodd, thank you. This is quite a standard move in, in uh, administrative documents uh, in the 21st century. I, I think we need to catch our constitution up. Also membership categories. One thing jumped out to us, we need to add an international student membership uh, uh, to that. Uh, we also need to update contact information requirements in our current constitution. It's all about uh, home addresses. The reality is we're now so tied to our phones and, and, and computers, email and phone numbers seem to be the way forward, as well as clarifying the roles of officers and other executive members. Uh, we've got, uh, as we have, have developed, and, and this development has occurred over the last couple of years, but especially as it relates to social media, uh, uh, ongoing communication efforts with members, these often these activities are taking on a life of their own beyond any one position. So we're, we're working on clarifying particular roles of officers as well as executive committee members uh, to link them to particular activities, including uh, minute taking that uh, uh, hopefully we, we uh, would like to uh, uh, connect with the student representative role uh, uh, that could then be supervised by our uh, executive secretary who's also heavily involved in, in, in uh, uh, communicating with our members uh, and, and a variety of other activities. So look, we, we have not yet finalized this revised version, but to all our current members and especially those that have renewed for the next year, please be on the lookout uh, ahead of our next symposium, which we do hope is face-to-face, -face, March two, uh, 2022. Uh, uh, be on the lookout for that revised constitution that we will need all of your review and support in order to move forward, all right? Uh, that's about that. Membership was another issue that we tackled and have been focused on over the last couple of years. Uh, membership review activities during 2020, 2021. Uh, we really have sought to address the reducing membership we've seen over the years with the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. And this was exacerbated by the problems with our last uh, in-person symposium. Do, uh, so that's our 18th symposium dealing uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We, our, our numbers, our attendance was far lower than it was in the past, resulting in a far lower membership list. Uh, but what we're also dealing with is a much longer list of contacts that we regularly share information with and email versus our smaller list of paid members. We want to focus on making that smaller list of paid members into our bigger list of contacts, right? As of right now, or at least in 2019, we had about 45 paid members. We're somewhere around that same uh, uh, number right now. 
Uh, but we have uh, developed new efforts, new ways of interacting, new ways of paying membership dues, including our online membership portal on the ASJ website that we're hoping encourages people to move from a kind of a detached relationship with us as they show up on our mailing list to fully commit to ASJ membership. So this is a drive that we've been committed to over the last couple months and one that we, we hope to pursue. Uh, you can see on the slide here, we've got an online membership portal now that ideally will be used by our local members and we've already seen it be quite useful for our international members. Uh, our secretary, current secretary, and for a number of years has been our secretary, Miss Ashley Jones, has, has carried out communication efforts with our members. We sent out a mailing on the, on the eve of the COVID pandemic, I think it was in April, letting all our members know that we will continue with our operations and, and definitely communicating uh, virtual activities that we were engaged on. Ashley led the way with that, and that information was also circulated by our, our social media channels. One of the big question marks in our minds, though, and one that we really want to hammer home uh, in, the, in the minds of our members, that there's clear benefits for being an ASJ member beyond the supporting archaeology in Jamaica, the development and practice of archaeology in Jamaica. We uh, uh, believe we are able to offer updates on current research in Jamaican archaeology history and, and heritage. Uh, we want to involve, uh, we want to engender a space uh, that integrates a global network of students, professionals, as well as enthusiasts that, that our members can benefit from. Uh, we want to uh, actively invite and provide special rates for events, including uh, our, our virtual webinars like you all attended today, as well as when we're able to get back to face-to-face -face business, field trips, workshops, other, other events like that. But, but one of the most important benefits, I, I believe, is the access to the ASJ archives, which I, I'll talk more about uh, under research and publications. This is initiative uh, started under Dr. Susan Francis Brown's leadership, and she's also carried out a substantial portion of the scanning of archaeology Jamaica. But as our honorary member Ainsley Enriquez just mentioned in the chat, there is a need to also inventory and gather together and make accessible to our members the 19 years of symposia uh, proceedings that have that have taken place. So uh, this is, is something that we need to formalize, the benefits for our society, there's still work to be done. And we really do appreciate everyone's patience and support uh, as we uh, uh, develop particular, as we develop and make accessible benefits to our members. So thank you to the support of our old and new members. Uh, uh, and I, I definitely do wanna note uh, the presence of our of our uh, uh, honorary members, Ainsley Enriquez, soon to be Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones, uh, Miss Audine Brooks stands out as one of our honorary members, as well as our founders, Dr. James Lee, uh, uh, George Leckler. Uh, but what's very nice to see recently, and and Ashley uh, Jones, I want to allow you to to speak uh, on this slide if I've if I've missed anything. But Ashley and I just over the last week have been commenting on just the sheer the, the new members that we're seeing. It's not membership renew renewals. These are these are brand new members, uh, uh, which is really I think a positive sign for our direction, for our growth. And for the support of our society, I, I just want to note uh, the, and I'll note this later on in the report, we've had donations from individuals over the last year that will, and I'll tell you uh, later on about our financial situation, that will, that really provides us the energy and the ability to carry out some of these activities that lead directly to benefits uh, for our members. And, and a, a donation that just came through two days ago uh, from the Digital Archaeological Archive of Comparative Slavery, Dr. Jillian Galley, Dr. Fraser Nyman. I, I, I have to note that uh, especially, and I, I really do appreciate their support and their membership. We all do in the executive board. But Ashley Jones, before I move forward from membership, 
Uh, obviously, we're going to continue this membership review and continue the work. Am I am I forgetting anything, or have I left anything out? I would love to have your 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 sign off here. Uh, no, Zach. Um, I um, I don't know if you want to do like a little shout out to to all the persons who made donations. Um, I know that um, Wendy Lee made donations. I know that um, Anne Marie Petros. She's not here. She also made a donation. Um earlier in the year they pay their memberships and you know give a little more um and we do want to say thank you to everybody who gives donations because we're trying to really you know make an impact on um on the field of archaeology here we want to do outreach we want to do so many things um and often in the past what really held us back was that we didn't have the funds to do so so your donations really help out um so that we're able to to do these field trips, do um, the webinars, get a new website, all of these things um, so that we can connect better, especially um, during COVID-19 now when we, we really can't convene, we're able to go online um, and, and make these connections a little easier with our um, international community, especially who have really come out in support of us this year and are now able to join the society because we know um, can facilitate the, the donations and the um, payment um, of membership fees via PayPal. Um, but, but yeah, um, we really just want to say a big shout out to those people yes. and, you know, really thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. And I, 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 I th and thank you for providing your, your thanks to our, our generous members and, and supporters. Uh, moving from oh, membership, Zach, Zach, yes, too. Yes. Um, the people also who are students and and they don't use the student category and they um just pay the regular fee. They pay more than they need to, so those are counted as donations as well. People like Andrea Richards, you know. Um, thanks so yep. much for that. Yep, you're you're giving us life and you're reminding us that this is that this is a valuable. Uh, 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 you know, valuable work that we're all engaged in. So thank you so much to our members. Uh, uh, and we look forward to communicating with you directly more and providing even more of a virtual and, and hopefully soon physical presence uh, uh, for, for Archaeology Jamaica. Uh, so beyond membership events, as I'm sure you all can, can uh, understand, we're, we're quite limited uh, in 2020, 2021. Uh, due to the COVID pandemic, we did have some site visits and field work that involved ASJ members, as well as students uh, at the, at the Mona Department of History and Archaeology. I want to note specifically the work, the, the uh, archaeological investigation of Fort Stewart that was led by uh, our, our, our distinguished member, uh, Dr. Ivor Connolly. Uh, you can see current members Javier Gordon, Romaine Thomas, uh, and Angelique Mullings assisting with this work. We had a handful of people out there between August and December 2020 completing this research. Chances are you're gonna see this work featured in an upcoming, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtual seminar, uh, uh, also involving members from Georgian Society, Jamaican Historical Society. Uh, that was a pleasure. And, and I also had the pleasure of, of bringing out some of my uh, ASJ uh, board members, uh, students, they're all smiling now, but this, uh, I think by the end of this, this trip up uh, the, the old military road of Fort Clarence uh, uh, in um, uh, overlooking Fort Clarence Beach, uh, Portmore, uh, it was a tough trip, but they're all smiling here, but that was a, uh, a, a research trip to assess uh, this this fort uh, built World War period, 1880s to, to, to 1944 or so. It's an extensive fort. We spent a full day out there. Uh, we, uh, uh, I think I lost a couple, uh, uh, well, we didn't physically lose them, but we, uh, uh, their, their, their efforts were definitely affected by the, the bushy, harsh terrain and, and high sun. But uh, that, that was a pleasure to have you all. Uh, some some members in January 2021 on that trip. I'm looking more forward to more trips to Fort Clarence. I'm not sure about about these these individuals here. Uh, ideally, in 2021 2022, we plan to resume face to face field trips. Uh, your support, as well as your suggestions, 
I know Wendy Lee has mentioned in the past, and I'm still going to call you up on this offer, Wendy, to, to visit her uh, family home in, in, uh, on the North Coast, uh, which is also a historical site. Uh, these are the type of suggestions that, that we will follow up on as soon as it's safe and as soon as that we can use some of these uh, uh, recent uh, finances from membership uh, uh, renewals and uh, uh, new memberships, as well as donations in order to carry out this, this, this work. But thank you all. Uh, and we're looking forward to getting back into the field and getting back to, to, uh, to some trips. Uh, but beyond physical site visits, we have been engaged, and this has taken up a lot of our time uh, over, the, over the last year, our last in, or these virtual events. Our last in-person event was our 18th symposium held at the UE Mona Library Multifunctions Room between March 11th and 12th. The event was, was successful, but suffered from low turnout and low membership payments as a result of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. So to counter uh, those limitations and to ensure that we could still interact with our members and ideally motivate them to still take us seriously and to renew or initiate new memberships. Uh, we, we shifted from face-to-face -face interaction. We successfully launched a new Archaeology Jamaica virtual webinar series highlighting thematic research from J Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. We had four successful offerings between October 2020 and March 2021. The recordings are available on YouTube and Facebook for at least the three first uh, webinars uh, are the one from today. Our inheritance will work on editing and making that available on our social media platforms as well. Other webinars will be planned for 2021-2022, uh, underscoring the ASJ commitment to not only this new I mean, newer for, for many people, new way of, of sharing and presenting knowledge, uh, but also in terms of our old objectives outlined by some of our founding members beginning in the 60s and 70s to promote research and training in Jamaican archaeology. We're going to push this, this uh, uh, Archaeology Jamaica webinar series further. Uh, thank you so much for our participants, our collaborators, as well as supporters. I want to specifically thank the UE Mona Department of History and Archaeology, the UE Mona Library, the Jamaica National Heritage Trust, the Institute of Jamaica, the Jamaica Historical Society, uh, the Jamaican Georgian Society, the Jamaican Caving Organization, as well as I've already mentioned, the Digital Archaeological Archives of Comparative Slavery for contributing, for, for supporting us. Uh, we look forward to more interaction with our members, as well as with our sister organizations. Uh, I've already mentioned the, 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 the donation we received from, from DAX, the Digital Archaeological Archives of Comparative Slavery, uh, but they've also uh, become a new institutional member. I think that may be one of our only institutions uh, that, has, that have initiated either new membership or renewed membership. This is something that we need to uh, 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 what solidify with our institutional partners. All right. Uh, so that's events. I, I, I really just have to thank John Shorter, Angelique Mullings, uh, uh, Ashley Jones, Renee Nelson, uh, 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 Javier Gordon, David Elliott. We had, and, and I, board members, I do, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting anyone here. Uh, we had so many meetings beyond our monthly uh, uh, board meetings dealing specifically with these events. So thank you all for making yourself available, for contributing your ideas uh, and, and leading to the, to the success of not only these events, but the ongoing success of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. Uh, Moving from events now to social media and website, this, again, we're in the 21st century. Twitter, Facebook, website blogs, uh, Instagram, these are the new way for promoting, sharing information, uh, interacting with international local members. Uh, so this has become a, a focus of the ASJ activities, and, and we've been led uh, subcommittee chaired by uh, our, our distinguished board member, Angelique Mullings, 
thank you, Angelique, for leading this effort. But this was a, a subcommittee involving Dr. Renee Nelson, who's our current vice president, Ashley Jones, our secretary, John Shorter, our board member, David Elliott, student representative, and then other students that we recruited to serve within this subcommittee, including Jalissa Graham, Ashley Onfroy, and Javier Gordon, who I think is in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the room right now. So thank you all for your efforts. We've expanded our social media uh, offerings across these well-known channels that I've mentioned. Facebook, we've got over a thousand followers. Instagram, we've now reached over 600, and I think it's climbing daily. This is almost double from where we were at last uh, last year. Twitter, uh, uh, we've we've grown to over 200 followers. That's well more than double from last year. And John Shorter, thank you so much for leading the way there with assistance from other members. But uh, we, 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 we've gotten on to uh, these social media channels, also including YouTube to share our webinar recordings. And it takes an incredible effort uh, and commitment by, by these subcommittee members. So again, I just wanna thank them. Also thanks to Angelique Mullings for rolling out a new template for our website, uh, uh, archeologyjamaica.wordpress.com. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, we, uh, and that has been a great way to also establish our online membership platform and, and share some of these uh, 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 posts that we put out on social media uh, into a, a blog style uh, format, I guess. Uh, over the last year, we did at least 15 thematic posts on a variety of, 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 of archeology, span heritage, history related uh, themes, uh, and, and as well as shared ASJ events, other relevant events put on by our sister societies, uh, as well as providing messages, updates for our ASJ members and the public. But we hope to uh, not only enhance our followers on social media channels, but to redevelop our website into an archeologyjamaica.com branded uh, website. Uh, and look, this would be a website that's a more robust platform than our current one that advertises the work of the ASJ as well as providing constantly updated resources to our members, including that archive of past publications that I'd mentioned. But look, there's been good with social media, but you got to accept the good and the bad. And one of, uh, and I won't necessarily label it as a, as a bad event because I, I think this is something that within the ASJ uh, with our ongoing presence uh, via social media, we should come to expect. But we dealt with some controversy following our second webinar on December 18th, 2021. This is uh, 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 the reaction uh, in the lead up to our Sugar and Society, uh, the Historic Archaeology Jamaican Plantations webinar was, was, quite, uh, was quite negative. Uh, many Twitter users, uh, not, you know, some, but a lot felt that having a panel consisting of entirely white foreigners was not appropriate for such a topic. Um, while we continued with the events, uh, we responded to the concerns and were able, and I think clearly able to learn from the public's feedback. Uh, this experience has helped uh, renew our commitment to not only showcase thematic archeological work in Jamaica, but also highlight the Jamaican voices involved in such work. And we're gonna to continue to strive to be an organization that not only promotes and preserves Jamaican archeology, span but helps to change the academic landscape for Jamaican archeology. span And much of this description I'm providing right now and these activities have been led by Angelique Mullings in association with some other uh, 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 ASJ board members and subcommittee members. Angelique, I do want to provide you the opportunity before I, I move any further uh, to, to provide any other information if I've, if I've forgotten anything. And thank you so much, Angelique, for in many ways transitioning us from a tradition of hard copy, face-to-face, -face, formal interactions to now uh, multi-headed uh, 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 consistent and reactive uh, approach to communicating with our members. Am I leaving out anything? Um, that, I think you basically covered everything just to underscore the role of people like um, John Shorter, 
uh, on Twitter. Javier Gordon is the one who set up the YouTube channel. We wouldn't be on YouTube without him. Um, Ashley Jones for setting up the membership portal. So this was definitely a group effort. Yeah, well, and I, I think I said at the beginning of this presentation, all of this is just me, you know, reiterating uh, the teamwork that has been, uh, that has brought us all together over the last year. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Anjali. So moving forward, we're almost done all, at least with the, the executive committee report. Research and publications, this is still remains the area uh, that's a core objective of the society, but has, has languished uh, uh, and I, you know, for, for at least more than five years or more. And, and I think Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby has a, has a better sense of when physical publications were more active and then the time in which this dropped off. There's a clear need and we're all motivated to energize uh, this, this output, this important output of the ASJ. We have begun some initial, well, some important steps to ensure that we can highlight our research and publication uh, uh, legacy. This includes Archaeology Jamaica, old series and new series, the inventorying, as well as the scanning. Uh, Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones, in many ways, saved us uh, by co collecting and collating. Uh, 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 I think it's between 1965 and 1985, the old series, hard copies bound and stored in the archaeology lab. This has been a fundamental source uh, used for, for digitizing this, this, this series. So the old series is, uh, based on my current understanding, we're, 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 we're almost complete. I would say 99% complete there. The new series is a bit less complete, even though it's more recent in time. Uh, we're going to have to continue a bit more work uh, to ensure that we've got all of these uh, 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 sources uh, collected. And, and look, these sources have been so fundamental to my understanding of Jamaican archaeology. I think a lot of people, they've been useful in classes that I've taught. I actually uh, interacted with uh, Miss Yolanda Lindsay, uh, who I think is in the, the, the chat today. So I just want to big you up, Yolanda. Thank you for your help. These sources are incredibly valuable for students, for education, and for earmarking, uh, uh, for having a clear mark on the, the important legacy of our society. We need to make these available uh, in a digital format. Uh, this is, uh, and, and that question of access is something that I'll, I'll raise in the, in, in the next few slides, but the new series, I'll, I'm currently working on on the inventory there. I've been in communication with a handful of people. I, I also just have to thank not only Susan Francis Brown, but Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby for your, for your clear assistance, ensuring that we have the full inventory for old series, as well as, as, well as new series. We're close. Uh, but one thing that we need to follow up on, and this Ainsley mentioned this Ainsley Enriquez, our honorary member, before he departed, is now inventorying the past symposium proceedings over the last 19 years. Uh, I'm not sure how widely shared those would have been among members or executive board members, uh, but, but this is the, one of the next steps. So we're going to have this, the new board, whoever that may be, uh, this, this side of the research and publication uh, uh, will require your energy in relation to these symposium proceedings. Uh, I am interested to know anybody's insights on where these will be. We obviously have older members here today that likely remember all 19 of these. Uh, so perhaps they can help us track down these, these proceedings. Another remaining issue as it relates to inventorying, uh, I guess speaks more about access. How do we want to make these resources accessible? both old series and new series. Uh, prior to my time as, as, as president of the Archaeological Society, Dr. Susan Francis Brown uh, began a, a discussion with the Digital Library of the Caribbean, which is based in the University of Florida. That would be a good option. Uh, and they would take care of a lot of uh, the process of, of storing and inventorying uh, and making this accessible to an international audience. But 
I think it's important for the ASJ uh, and our, our members to decide what is the best way forward. Because we could also invest in a website ourselves, making these resources available and making it a clear benefit for our paying members, as opposed to DLOC, which would, and I, I don't mind this, but it would be free for all. And, and, and perhaps we're missing an opportunity to ensure that we're able to attract members year after year based on access to, uh, to our archives. So I want to I wanna throw that issue out there. We, we clearly have not finalized where, what we will be doing with these, but I think it's an interesting point that I hope uh, uh, members can, can, can respond to. And, and other than that, we need to revive Archaeology Jamaica. Uh, which again, old series and news, new series from what started off more as, as smaller journal articles and then uh, developed into a, a newsletter. Uh, much has changed in the world of knowledge sharing and publication since Archaeology Jamaica was first offered and became popular beginning in the mid 1960s. Academics like myself, graduate students, are now often more focused on peer-reviewed publications for their career development. And Dr. Ben Torres mentioned it even matters which journal you, you go with, right? Uh, so per perhaps uh, many of the potential papers we'd like to include here in Archaeology Jamaica, unless it's peer-reviewed, we're going to miss out on those. Uh, and also, I, I, I want to raise the issue that a lot of the information that was previously shared in newsletters, Archaeology Jamaica newsletters. A lot of that content has now, be sh has now been shifted over to social media channels and, and websites. So we need to ensure that we're not relying on a model for Archaeology Jamaica that now is outdated or a model that would require us, require a lot of effort to ensure that it's a publication that reaches the standards of peer review and, and accessibility that other publications around the world have that attract you know, high level research contributions. But those are, I'm just raising these issues and I'm, I'm hoping uh, uh, I can get some feedback from, from folks, but bottom line, we are, we are aiming to revive Archaeology Jamaica to create a new Archaeology Jamaica offering, uh, but we will need into 2021, 2022 to do this. There's different options. We could launch Archaeology Jamaica as a biannual thematic series offered in both digital and hard copy formats, but unless it's peer reviewed, chances are you're, we may miss out on some of the offerings that we get during symposiums that we've gotten from our virtual webinar. Uh, so perhaps we look towards a peer reviewed edited volume, more of like a published book organized thematically that features important archeological research from the past. Uh, so some of our, our past uh, uh, ASJ members or, or other work that has taken place in Jamaica, but also combined with more recent studies of both prehistoric and historical sites. So a lot of issues here, a lot of questions. I am so pleased over the last couple months to have Leslie Gale, Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby's eager ear. Uh, I, I've reiterated all these issues to her. She has agreed to serve as the editor, as the subcommittee chair for our research and publication efforts moving forward. Uh, so this is an issue that we will pick up and hopefully have something more, something more, whether it's physical, material or digital, something more solid to share over the next year. All right, and, and I just want to say thank you, Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby. Thank you, Susan Francis Brown. Thank you, Professor James Robertson, for, for your assistance thinking about research and publications. We need to get beyond the thinking and, and get to the doing, right? And, and decide what, what format that will be. Uh, Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby, before I move on here, is there, is there anything you would like to add to the discussion on research and publications? Okay, thank you, Zach. Um, I don't. No problem. I don't have um, any issues with the objectives that you have presented, and many of these are things that we have discussed um, in the past. So um, this isn't um, anything new. I I would like to highlight two things. Um, to my knowledge, there is only 
one proceeding of past symposia. Um, I think it was 2005. I know it's number 19 that covered 2003, four and five. Um, to my knowledge. So we definitely do have a lot of backlog in terms of symposia proceedings to, to organize and to, to push out. Um, secondly, I have no issues with the changing the format. And this is something I've, I've already mentioned um, in agreement with you. Um, of our archaeology Jamaica going forward, we don't really need to have a newsletter. Um, as you had said, other formats can facilitate those, um, those needs. Um, and we should target more having a journal, no issues also with it peer reviewed and in consultation with the, the board, because it is a committee, we can identify lists of, of individuals that we can target to serve as our reviewers for our respective manuscripts. And I'm looking forward to getting um, Archaeology Jamaica back in print <laughs> online or even circulated via email as long as we, we get it um, up and running. Um, it was a, a passion project for um, Dr. James Lee and I've always been a little heartbroken about our inconsistency in sustaining it. And that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Leslie. I, and thank you so much for your, for your support over, I mean, it's been many years at this point, but the last year for me personally has just, has been crucial. And uh, as you said, uh, we're adopted siblings at this point. So uh, I really look forward to uh, moving this relationship this collaboration and and the society for we are we are better off with you uh, 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 involved and in, and in advising us. Thank you. Uh, now, what everyone perhaps has been waiting for, and look, all I'm seeing some issues raised in the chat uh, that, that involves a lot of multitasking for me. But I do want to note that Dr. Susan Francis Brown mentioned that uh, our our supporters. Uh, uh, from DAX, Dr. Jillian Galley and Dr. Fraser Nyman. Uh, they're currently absent today because they're, rightfully so, there's an ongoing DAX online presentation that many of our past webinars have actually, we've, we've crisscrossed one another. So uh, again, I just wanna note our, our clear thanks for their, for their support. Uh, we look forward to future collaborations over, over the next year. Uh, uh, all right, all. So, I guess, importantly, treasury. And look, this has been, I did not realize when I came to became president, I, I focused on archeology. span I didn't realize I had to focus on finances. My wife deals with that. Uh, I'm not really financially minded, but we really needed to be in order to get the society back on track. We took some significant steps to update and formalize the ASJ financial situation in the many years, well, not many, but uh, I, I became involved with the society in 2014. Very, uh, I, and I, I guess I wasn't concerned until this last year about the lack of transparency and the lack, uh, lacking ability of board members to have a clear sense of the status of accounts, right? So, uh, and that's not to blame anyone. We just needed to get some, some. Uh, active individuals involved that were collaborating and, 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 and understood the huge responsibility it is as a, as a non-for-profit organization. When we're accepting memberships, when we're accepting donations, we've got to be transparent and show what we are doing with, with this support. So, uh, and this was such a long process, but we transferred and I, before I even begin, Thank you, uh, Diane Golden Frankson, our current treasurer. Thank you, Clive Gray, uh, uh, who were actively, uh, along with myself, involved with transferring account names uh, and then getting our account at NCB into the name of, of current active board members. We changed the account name from Mr. Dor Gray, Miss Audine Brooks from the JNHT, to our current members, Diane Golden Frankson. Clive Gray, Ashley Jones, and myself, all current board members. 
Uh, we also, in conjunction with establishing and, 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 and now knowing the status of our local account, we established a new international account. We're on PayPal. And that was established less than a year ago. And you can see, based on the account numbers, just how much of a, of a boon, uh, of, a, of an enhancement that was for our, our finances, which clearly shows the international reception, the international support of, of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. While some of those PayPal uh, donations and memberships are coming from locals using PayPal, PayPal definitely has a lot of international people uh, uh, using it as a standard of, of, of online payments. So I'm so pleased to, to have established that. Thank you, John Shorter, for uh, looking into PayPal, getting us signed up. Uh, and as you can see, currently our accounts are sitting at, uh, uh, in the NCB, $85,808.41. PayPal, $105,391.88, bringing us to a grand total of $194,788.52. Uh, I'll tell you, all the board members are, are so incredibly pleased to not only now have a transparent account that we were in, that we're in control of, but to just see the, the clear support locally, regionally, internationally, uh, uh, really just gives us I mean, it just gives us energy. I'll tell you, our WhatsApp groups have just been been pinging off the off the wall uh, with with the, the the shows of support that we've seen, with members renewing their membership, uh, 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 new members coming in, and then the donations that I've, I've previously mentioned. I just want to note that this these funds are essential for our future work as it relates to a new robust website that'll likely be launched by a, by a Squarespace. Uh, I've got a designer in mind, but that'll obviously be vetted by the, uh, by the current board because that designer is, is my wife, uh, uh, who's, who's a, a graphic designer who, I've, who has pledged to me that uh, it, it will be cheap. Uh, so hopefully we can follow that line, but obviously we'll want to keep it ethical and, and any other web designers uh, that we could involve potentially. We, we, we should see their proposals, see their offerings. Uh, I definitely don't want to introduce nepotism, but I know my wife can do it. And I know she's quite, quite good with it uh, and would give it to us cheap. Uh, but also research and publication, that, that feeds into the website. But if we are looking into any physical printed uh, 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 publications, but also even when we get back into the business of face-to-face public education and interaction. These are materials, banners, printouts that can be used in order to spread our me message. We also can spread our message with merchandise, t-shirts uh, we've, we've entertained and we need to design those, uh, mugs, uh, maybe even Archaeology Society Jamaica trowels. I would, I would love to see that. Uh, these are now options that we can entertain that can not only spread the identity of, of ASJ, but more so Jamaican archeology, span uh, but also provide another revenue generating source beyond relying solely on membership uh, uh, payments and donations alone. And this, and this money also will be so fundamental for our future in-person events and in-person field trips, which since I've been involved in the society in 2014, whenever field trips or events were brought up, it was, well, what members can contribute? Uh, how can we pay? How can we encourage individuals to pay for these things uh, by themselves? Now we have a source of funds that can be directly used for renting buses, for, for providing water and, and, and snacks and, and, other, and other things like that. So uh, uh, I, I now want to invite Diane Golden Frankson. Uh, to, to share any other information that I may have left out or that she sees as, as valuable for this treasurer report, uh, because she is our treasurer. Well, Zach, um, I, I have to thank you for pretty much giving my report. <laughs> um, one of the things that I would like to actually say is that one of the intentions I had 
when I took over as treasurer was to bring this entire process into the 21st century. We needed to be able to advance the, the organization further and have a situation where, as, I, as we said, that merchandise is actually one of the main pushes I'm going to actually be making during the coming year, if I'm still treasurer, um, to bring more money into the kitty and to diversify the whole process of earning money for the organization, for the society. I'm actually very pleased at what we have managed to do in the past year. I am exceedingly pleased because we were coming from a financial situation of having less than $50,000 to our name. And we have now improved our circumstances significantly to almost just a little under $200,000. Now, that really does open up um, a lot of avenues for us to move forward in a lot of our future plans. And so I will definitely say that I have to personally thank Clive Gray, Ashley, and Zach um, for us all working together to actually set up a very transparent financial system where no one person is in control of knowing what monies are there and what monies are present. So now it's an all man in, all hands in kind of collaborative situation. And so that's basically all that I have to say. Thank you so much, Diane. I, I will say, I mean, obviously it took just a combined effort to transfer these accounts, especially it, during the era of, of COVID. I mean, Diane and, and Clive, uh, Dean, uh, we were standing outside of banks and close quarters in the hot sun. Uh, I almost passed out. I think Diane was, was close to it. I am, I'm just so pleased that we've, that we've, gotten ourselves into the situation that we now are. We still have a lot of more, a lot of work to do, but I think less so on this treasury business. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting on to say some more pressing issues like, like research and publications and, and our membership benefits. Uh, so thank you all. That brings us to the end of the executive committee reports. Uh, again, a product of the efforts of the executive committee. Uh, presented by the current president of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, that's myself. Are there any questions, comments, uh, issues raised in that portion of the report before we move forward into the next phase of this, of this AGM? I would like to give our members, uh, uh, hopefully all paid members, and if you're not a current paid member, it, it's, it's straightforward and easy to do, and you'll need to do that in order to vote in the upcoming uh, uh, activities that we have going on, which is our election. Are there any issues that individuals would like to raise as it relates to treasury, as it relates to research and publication, social media and website, events, uh, membership, constitution review? Any issues? All right, all, well, thank you for, for your support, your continued attendance. I think let's move on to the more fun part of, of the AGM. And this is where we get to honor some giants uh, in archeology, span uh, in, uh, 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 in Jamaican archeology. span An important function outlined in our ASJ constitution is the awarding of honorary memberships to individuals who have contributed greatly to the society and Jamaican archeology. span uh, in the past, the ASJ has honored founding members like Dr. James Lee, Mr. George Leckler. More recently, we've confirmed honorary lifetime memberships 
on Mr. Ainsley Enriquez, who is previously here. Thank you, Enriquez, for your attendance today, for your long support of Jamaican archaeology, history, and heritage management. And more recently, last year, we provided our former uh, treasurer and long-standing member, long-standing archaeologist, Miss Audine Brooks, with honorary membership. So we're continuing the tradition this year with the recognition of two leaders of Jamaican archaeology. Uh, just to note, honorary members are lifetime positions, but these, these individuals are not entitled to vote or serve as officers of the executive committee. So they get to, they get to be celebrated by the ASJ, remembered and can take an active role, but they don't need to worry themselves with this, the nuts and bolts of the society, allow us to, to, to carry out this work while, while holding you all up on a, on a pedestal, because that's certainly, you have certainly led the way in, in many ways. These nominations have been soundly endorsed. We've talked about this for at least a year now by the current board of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. We now, with our, with our, with our paid members, seek your support in welcoming our new honorary members. So to begin with, uh, Professor e. Corfi, uh, e. Kofi Agorsa is the first lecturer in archaeology at the UE Mona from 1987 to 1993, long-standing member of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica and an active member of the ASJ editorial committee, as seen in noted publications between 1990 and 1995, Archaeology Jamaica News Series numbers 1 through 10, and Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swavey can correct me for, if I'm wrong, but I, I think uh, Dr. Agorso was involved with, with all of those publications. Uh, importantly, Dr. Agorso conducted archaeological research at the, at the Papine Estate right on campus, but also some of the maroon sites that we heard about today, Akompong, Nanny Town, but also Reader's Pen, he did some work at uh, plantation site Holland Estate, as well as Siemens Valley. Uh, uh, all of many of these collections are a part of, of uh, the Yui Mona Archaeology Lab collections, and they continue to provide opportunities for research, training, and public exhibits. But beyond these collections, Dr. Agorsa's research and publications have contributed to a, a clearer understanding of, of maroon sites in, in particular, but of Jamaican archaeology and human experience in Jamaica more, more broadly. His, his 1993 article, Archaeology and Resistance History in the Caribbean, is one that constantly appears on my, on my syllabi for, for, for students. Uh, something I would have come into contact with in graduate school, along with his 1994 Maroon uh, edited volume, Maroon Heritage, Archaeological, Ethnographic, and Historical Perspectives. With Then in 2011, his chapter co-published with Candace Goucher uh, in the edited volume by James Dell, uh, Douglas Armstrong, and Mark Hauser, The Historical Archaeology of Jamaica. This this, this chapter was excavating the roots of resistance, the significance of Maroons to Jamaican archaeology. Uh, Dr. Angorsa has also contributed to the training of Jamaican specialists, uh, like Mr. Sylvanius Walters, Miss Annie Howard Brown, as well as Miss Ava Tomlinson, who I know uh, uh, in his very warm response when I, when I, when I informed him we were, we were honoring him today, uh, he mentioned these individuals by name, uh, his former students. He was pleased to hear the ASJ is still strong and supported our continued efforts. He sends everyone his sincere thanks from his home in Ghana as he recovers uh, uh, from, from, from recent surgery. So Dr. Kofi Agorso, you have our love, our respect, and we are honored to, to now uh, 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 present you with, with honorary membership. Uh, I, I do wanna provide Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby the opportunity to provide any thoughts, uh, Leslie, that you may have on, on Kofi Agorsa before I move forward with, with reading the response that he sent to all of us that I wanna, I wanna share with our members. Uh, Leslie? Zach? 
I think Leslie yep. left. Yeah, I think she had to leave. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Well, I, I know yeah. she had uh, some some words prepared, but I won't. I, 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 uh, maybe we can share those later on on Instagram or, or social media, right? And, and again, thank you, Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson Swaby for helping me put together these, these, these honorary membership uh, statements. Uh, so moving forward, Kofi, thank you. Uh, we will send this honorary membership certificate to you virtually if you want us to send it to your home in Ghana, please please let us know, but I congratulate Dr. Kofi Ogorsa for your, for your work in Jamaica and, 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 and globally, all right? Uh, here is the message from, from Kofi. To the president, executives, and fellow members of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, uh, I write in great humility to thank you for your recognition and the honor you are bestowing on me. Uh, in one of my interactions and encounters when I was promoted to emeritus status a few years ago, I stated that if archaeology is not most essential in education on heritage, what is? And, and, I, and I explained that my archaeological experience in Jamaica convinced me and confirmed this conviction. It is for this reason that I highly appreciate your continued efforts in keeping up with the spirit and carrying it to higher levels. We must thank Mr. Edward Moulton Barrett, a British lawyer whose donation made the establishment of the teaching and research program in archeology span possible. The Archeological Society of Jamaica followed the strong background work undertaken by Dr. James Lee, Ainsley Enriquez, George Leckler, and many others who sustained the effort and supported the growth of the program. Today, we can boast of cont contributing scholars and scholarly works, including publications and educational opportunities in archeology span and heritage studies internationally, and particularly the Caribbean and South America. The continued ASJ field trips remind me of the then challenging Maroon Heritage Research Project expeditions, which I, which I extended to Suriname and the active participation and the support of the ASJ and the publication of the Archaeology Jamaica. I'm glad to receive the honorary membership along with one of my colleagues, Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones, who has been part of this success story. And I'm sure he will testify to the good works of the ASJ. As I share the honor with the Department of History and Archaeology and the ASJ membership, I wish to also acknowledge that the DNA theme selected for ASJ discussion appears to be most appropriate at this time of our growth. I love the emphasis on our Kofi, you're still very much with us and I hope we are with you. My latest project in Ghana, the Koromansi or Archaeological Research Project, and you can see the website listed there, uh, may in the future benefit from such studies, even if indirectly. I miss the Elsa Gavaya Memorial Lecture, which we just had this past Tuesday, the seminars and all the academic topics and all the planned events. I congratulate you all, particularly Dr. Beyer and the UWE on putting up the elaborate programs, lectures and symposia, but I, I cannot accept that thanks alone. I, I am so indebted to the team of board members from the ASJ, as I've mentioned. But Kofi wants us to keep up the brilliance and the good works. I wish to end again with sincere appreciation of the honor. I shall continue to keep in touch and be one of the ASJ arms in this part of the world. Please accept and share my warm greetings, Kofi. Thank you so much, Kofi. And I'm, I'm even though we're virtual, I'm giving a round of applause on that, 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 that gives us energy. Thank you, Kofi. Uh, just want to see if uh, Leslie is back, but no, uh, I transition to our next honorary member in, the, in Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones, uh, the lecturer in archaeology at the Uli Mona between 1997 and 2006, also a long-standing member of the ASJ and active member of the ASJ editorial committee. Dr. Jo Allsworth Jones conducted archaeological research at multiple sites similar to Kofi at Nev Shalom, 
uh, at the Roaring River site, at Chancery Hall, at Green Castle, at Newry, at Wentworth, at Coleraine, at Retreat, at Stuart Castle, Warminster, as well as Fairfield. My goodness, Philip, you were busy. Uh, and his research and publications have contrib clearly contributed a, a specific understanding and one that's important to Jamaica of our prehistory, a pre-colonial history. His noted publications include the 2003 article that, that for me has been so useful in how I understand the UE collections, the 2003 article on the James W. Lee Arawak collection, UE Kingston, Jamaica, Facts and Figures, published with es Esther Rodriguez. Also his 2008 monograph, Pre-Columbian Jamaica, and his later 2012 uh, publication, The Taino Settlement at Guayguada, Excavations in St. Mary Parish, Jamaica, with his collaborator in field research and publication, Dr. Kit W. Wessler, who in the last two years, I think, maybe more passed. So uh, Kit Wessler most certainly has our support uh, here. And then a later publication, 2013, uh, Trepanipotosis, oh my goodness, I need to learn how to say that, in, uh, which deals with like syphilis in pre-Columbian Jamaica, a biocultural approach to the human cranium found in Bull Savannah, and that was a co-published paper with Anna Louise Santos and Michael Gardner. Dr. Allsworth Jones, beyond publication, his commitment is also seen in Jamaican archaeology in the cataloging and publishing the James Lee collection, which, like Kofi's Maroon collections and other collections from sites he excavated, has enhanced our uh, research, training, and public educational uh, public education potential within the Department of History and Archaeology, and more broadly with the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. And I know, and I'm sorry to say that Leslie isn't here currently, because I know she had a statement uh, that she shared with me earlier, Dr. Ellsworth Jones, that we will, we will make available likely through our social media channels in, in, in the form of a post. Uh, but I uh, just wanna extend our, our, our clear thanks, strong thanks to you, Dr. Ellsworth Jones, and now wanna provide you the opportunity to respond however however you see fit. But thank you, Dr. Philip Allsworth Jones from me, from all the board members of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica and all supporters of Jamaican archaeology. Hello. Hi Philip, we're hearing you. Yeah, I've I've also uh, you should be able to see me actually. Uh, not really. I've got video hit on on my screen, so I can focus on the screen. But yes, I think I think we're. I, we're... I, have, I have I have unblocked the video. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Yes, we can see. I'm not. Okay, we thank you. See. Thank you for confirming, Ashley. Yeah, you can see me. Well, so much the worse for you. Look, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Zach, and thank you very much to the society for for this honor. I very much appreciate it. Now, I don't think I should really say a huge amount because you're at the end of a, a long meeting. And uh, I think this would be, uh, you know, you wouldn't really, wouldn't really want to hear too much. But I want to, you mentioned two works in particular. You mentioned Guayguata and also the uh, book uh, on pre-Columbian Jamaica. So I just want to say something briefly about those two things. There were, there were loads of other things, but I'll just concentrate on those two. Uh, because, as a matter of fact, what I really want to say is common to both of them. And that is that whatever I managed to do in Jamaica, it was a joint endeavor. It was not me only at all. And if we, uh, if we take uh, the Guayguata first, uh, well, those were excavations in the north, on the north coast of Jamaica. They extended for five years from 1999 to 2003. And as you said, they were conducted uh, jointly with Kit Wessler, the late Kit Wessler. He was my, my friend before I came to Jamaica and we had agreed that uh, he would come and work with me if it was possible and it was possible. So it was absolutely invaluable 
that he was the co-director of that project. And we went round the island in 1998 and we had, at almost at the end of our circuit round the island, we had good luck uh, of uh, meeting Mr. Duncan Macmillan, uh, who owned Green Castle, a large estate. And he was very pleased to welcome us to uh, the site and both uh, Green Castle and Newry were on his territory. And from there we went also to Coleraine and Mr. Henry's uh, land at Wentworth. And so that was absolutely essential as well. Now, Kadeen Harris the other day mentioned uh, how nice it was that the students who, who came on our digs really didn't have to, had to pay for anything. And there were 38 students uh, from UWE and five from the United States who took part in our work over those, those five years. And where did, the, where did the money come from? Well, the money came from the university. It didn't come from the department uh, because the department simply didn't have the means to do such a thing. They provided the vehicle and they provided the help of, um, of our technician uh, without Karen Spence, without which, again, we couldn't, we couldn't really function, but the money came from UWE. And every year I had to go uh, to the research uh, committee of the campus. And I'm glad to say that every time I succeeded in persuading them and uh, that's how we got the money. Otherwise, we really, obviously, the whole thing would have been completely impossible. And then as far as the publication is concerned, uh, again, it's a joint work. Uh, and we had uh, many collaborators. Uh, Betsy Carlson uh, in Florida did the, the fauna. Simon Mitchell of geology department and his students, as well as Marcella Phillips, did the huge number of shells we had. Ana Luisa Santos, whom you mentioned, uh, she studied the human remains and Anthony Porter provided uh, identifications of some unusual rock types. So it was a, it was a multidisciplinary effort. And as I'm sure Zach and all uh, others will know, archaeology has simply got to be a multidisciplinary thing. Otherwise, in these days, it has to be like that. And that's how it was. So then the second thing, uh, pre-Columbian Jamaica, I mean, the work that ended up in the book, pre-Columbian Jamaica, uh, even more, uh, that was a collaborative affair, very much so. And um, it rests upon the work of Jim Lee, who as we mentioned more than once uh, already, he was the founder of this society in 1965 and also of the journal, which he edited up to 1986. And there's massive detailed records there. And he established a large collection of artifacts. And incidentally, with regard to archaeology Jamaica, I'm glad that uh, it's being digitized. But uh, I hope uh, that you haven't lost the index of archaeology Jamaica, which was established. Uh, because uh, that is an invaluable guide to what is there, and that would need to be digitized as well. Now that was done, that, okay, I'll come to how that was done. So there it is, I met James Lee, and um, he said that he would uh, donate the collection uh, to the university on condition that it was studied thoroughly and published. Well, that's okay, that's fine, that's good. But how were we going to get the money for that? Well, that was uh, quite a headache and it was solved in, I think still a pretty amazing way. By sheer chance, I met Mr. Paris Luai, who was the general manager of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute and explained what I wanted to do. And he said, oh, leave it to me. So within a week, he got the money. Uh, and that was money raised from the bauxite industry, in particular, Jamaica, uh, all part, and Kaiser. Now, of course, Jim Lee, apart from pursuing archaeology as an amateur, uh, was actually worked in the bauxite industry all his life. So there it is. They provided the money, uh, and in particular, the main business of that money 
uh, was to pay for my assistant, Esther Rodriguez, who was newly graduated from UWE. And she worked devotedly on this for three and a half years, including uh, the compilation of the index, which was no small job. So I had the job of being her taskmaster, but she was very ready uh, to, to do that job. And incidentally, you've been talking about peer reviewed journals. Obviously, Archaeology Jamaica, as produced by Jim Lee, <laughs> there was nothing at all to do with peer review in there. Uh, it was the record essentially of what he and his companions did, more or less in the form of a notebook. Uh, of course, he didn't need, he wasn't a university uh, member of staff uh, looking for promotion. It was entirely a labor of love on his part. So that's the way the whole thing got set up. And as I say, without all this collaboration of others, it could never have happened. The same people who contributed to the work on Guayguata, they also contributed to the work on pre-Columbian Jamaica, the book, and the CD. Now, Zach has mentioned an article which we had prior to that uh, in IACA, I think, but of course the, the, the real nitty gritty of the info is in the CD. And that was the work of Esther together with uh, Joy, Lewis, Joy Ellis in the JBI. And also some people whom I haven't mentioned so far, when you look at those works, they are beautifully illustrated and those are the illustrations done by the late Audrey Wiles and also by Alison West Martin, who I hope is still alive and well in the hills above Kingston. So there it is. Um, that's the second example of work that was done in collaboration with others and without that collaboration of others, uh, it could never have been done. So look, there were other things as well, but I'm not going to keep you longer. Um, those were the two, two things which stand out, if you like. But so as far as I personally are concerned, uh, I have to say a big thank you uh, to Yui uh, and to the department who invited me to come to Jamaica and gave me nine years of my life, which were quite unforgettable. And I say a big thank you. I say a thank you to the society today and also to, to Yui. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Philip Oswald Jones. Uh, thank you for your, your legacy here, your, your work. Uh, uh, and, and more so, thank you also for, for, for your continued support of, of, of the ASJ. Um, certainly, we hope to call upon you in the future so you can extend your, your discussion of your work here. Uh, uh, which no doubt will be very important for students uh, and, and our, our other uh, members locally and internationally. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, if there are any remaining, if there are no other remaining thoughts, we, we really only have one more task to go. And I think everyone is probably getting a bit antsy. So, uh, and, and understandably so, but before I leave, uh, thank you so much, Professor uh, e. e. Kofi Agorsa, uh, Professor Allsworth Jones. Uh, we we are in your debt. Jamaican archaeology is certainly in your debt. Uh, so all now, and this is the the, the final point of of uh, the a AGM, which are our elections. Each year, uh, current board members are expected to give up those positions. Uh, subcommittees are, are, um, uh, are uh, broken up and ideally reformed uh, with, the, with the new board. Uh, this year, it's new for us with, with this virtual setup. So I imagine there may be a few hiccups uh, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna call on our current uh, vice president to confirm what is, uh, Dr. Renee Nelson, what's the best way forward, but we're gonna have our immediate past president, Dr. Susan Francis Brown, lead uh, essentially the administration of the elections. Uh, as the immediate past president, uh, she is a, uh, 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 what, a, a natural part of the ASJ board, so is in a quite 
unbiased uh, situation uh, position. So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Francis Brown, for helping us through this, this next necessary stage. And uh, Dr. Renee Nelson, can you just confirm that we will likely be using the raise hand function? Yes, um, I guess um, Dr. Francis Brown, when you put up each position, each office for, you know, for votes, we'll ask the persons um, who, you know, are voting for that particular individual just to click the raise hand icon, right? Just click it, don't unclick it to remove the hand, just click it and leave it up. I will manually remove them if anything. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I, I don't thought... see that function. Well, Sorry, I didn't hear what Dan said. I said she I don't see, see that Dan. function on my on my thing. Um, Dan, Dan, if you have any reactions? reactions, I don't hear you. One person speak, please. Go, Rene. Hello. Um, Diane, if you look at the reactions button on the bottom towards the right hand side of your screen, uh -huh. if you click on that, you'll see raised hands as one of the, the options that you can use. I have thumbs up, claps. That's about it. Uh, let me check. Um, I am not seeing it either on my screen. I'm sorry. Folks. Really? I'm, <laughs> all yeah. I'm seeing is, yeah. All I'm seeing is on the reaction. I think it's, it's yeah. just emojis. Um, am, on mine, there are five, there are six emojis and then there's raise hand at the bottom. No? No, no I don't, I don't get that one. Diane, um, do you have a thumbs up? Yeah, I have a thumbs up. Well, that's, that's, I would have thought, well, Okay. We can work with the terms okay. Yes, we can. We can. We can. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. and guys, let me get myself sorted so I can thumb up or or raise hand. But I am. I'm telling you, I'm not seeing reactions or hand raise. I'm not seeing anything like that. Zach, I think it's because um you have the PowerPoint, but it, but it's yeah. It, you have to. Can have I it. stop? <laughs> Um, we, can I suggest, Zach, can I suggest that you take down the, the, um, take off the shared screen? Okay. Right. Yes, and right. That way I we can see. I see it now. Is, okay, that way we can see, I can pretty much see everybody who is on the screen yep. all at once, uh, which will simplify the situation. Yep, I can um, now do everything functionally without sharing screen. So happy to, to continue. Okay. Um, can I just ask whether the intent is to put forward a slate as was done last year, or is the intent that each position will be voted separately? Um, Renee, uh, I think each position voted separately, right? Okay. I think we should we probably can do it like last year, whatever is um, best suited to our current setup, right? Whatever okay. is best suited, um, Dr. Francis Brown. I would say you make the call. <laughs> okay. All right. So can I assume that everyone, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 22 persons on the screen. Do I assume that everybody presently in the in the room is a voting member of the society? Yes. So we'll have a maximum of 22 votes for any. Clive, uh, you got an audio problem, I think, but it's it's coming in and 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 sounding like we're getting abducted by aliens. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so you want to try again, Clive? Yes, Dr. Francis Brown. Everybody here is confirmed. 
I was saying technically 21. Technically, okay. tw oh, because you're there twice? Yes, he's out twice. Yep. Okay. Exactly. All right. So 21. we have 21. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be voting for um, five. We have five floor members. Am I correct? Yeah, that includes the student rep. Yes. Yep. We have treasurer, secretary, VP, and president. Is James there? James, which order do we normally go in? I, I really feel very ignorant uh, one year down the road. I'm not sure, but don't forget the student rep, the rest of the floor members can't stand for student rep, but the people who don't make student rep can stand for floor member. So we should probably start with that and then work up. Okay. Or unless you think we should start for president and then people, all the people who want Zach's job can then fight for the jobs on the, um, uh, uh, the committee. I really wish I could recall what is the what was the normal procedure, um, but I, I think, think we, we we started at the bottom and worked up. Okay. And when right. is so, that? Uh, uh, if there's if there was a call for nomination, should it, anyway? Uh, is that done with each position in mind? Um, it might be best. Yes. To, it might be best to do nominations if we start with a president and then work down. A, the, uh, then that means that the people who don't get it can still apply for the other posts. So when we get to the committee, we should probably do the student rep first in case they're rival candidates who can then stand for the pool of committee. Otherwise, if you, somebody loses an election, they can't stand for something else. Okay, so the suggestion is president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and then student rep, and then the floor members. That's, that's what I was, that, that, that would seem the way that allows most people to apply for most posts. Okay. All right, fine. So can I have nominations for president of the society of the ASJ for 2021-2022? Dr. Zachary Beer. Zach, Dr. Zachary Beer. Are there any other? That. Okay, so we have three nominations um, for Zachary, do we have any nominations for anyone else? Can I nominate Ash, um, sorry, Renee Nelson? Okay. Do we have a second though? I second. Okay. Thank you, Ash. Um, thanks, Angelique. Ashley, are you making note of the, the, the first and second um, for the nominations? Uh, Should no, it be? But it is being recorded. Okay, there you go. Um, all right. So we have two. We have two nominations for president of the ASJ. Um, one is Zachary Bao, who is the current or has been the current president of the right, ASJ. Um, I'll just I'll just put here that I'm not going up. I I I will not be going up for that position. So no need to vote on it. Okay, so you're withdrawing, Renee. Yes, yes. Okay, so with thanks to your well, thank you, um, thank you for the confidence, Andrea and, and Angelique. <laughs> but no, that's not for me. All right. So we have only one uh, nominee for president. Can I take it that we um, ask uh, Dr. Zachary Bell to again uh, be president of the ASJ by acclamation? Are there any, anybody against that? Okay, so Zach, um, you have been um, re-elected by, um, essentially by acclamation, I think, uh, as president of the ASJ for 2021, 2022. I'd like to take nominations for vice president of the ASJ. <laughs> We, we everybody can unmute at the end and we can really clap. Um, 
can I have nominations for vice president of the ASJ? Ready. We have uh, one nominee, uh, somebody has nominated Renee Nelson. Do I have a second? Do I have a seconder? Seconded. Thank you. Thomas. Romaine Thomas. Yeah, they're being seconded in the chat. Okay, yeah, great. Yep. Um, I think I better open the chat. All right. Uh, is there any other nomination for vice president of the ASG? If there I'd are no like to other nominates, um, Ashley Jones. Uh, Ashley Jones is nominated uh, as vice. That. John has seconded it, so we have uh, Renee and Ashley Jones. Are there any other nominations? Okay, so um, we're gonna vote on uh, for vice president on the two nominations for vice president of the ASJ. So I'm gonna ask um, those of you who can put um, your raised hand or a thumbs up, whichever of them, uh, for you to vote now. I'm gonna take votes for Renee Nelson first. Hold on a second. Did somebody? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're all shifting. <laughs> you're all shifting from moment to moment. So I'm just well, making sure that I have the correct count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So can I have votes for Ashley Jones? So everyone needs to lower. Say, please lower your please lower your hand, or take down your thumbs up, so that we have a clear screen. Yolanda and Clive, are those votes for the second nomination or are they still up from the first? We still have two persons who have their hands up. I Can we clear that? Mute, Clive. Clive? Sorry, I'm trying to find how to take it off, but... <laughs> oh, you got it. Okay, I think you're clear. All right, so we're clear now. So we're gonna take votes for Ashley Jones for vice president. Okay, so by a majority uh, of 73, we have, do I, do I, sorry. Is there a constitutional scholar in the room? If we just deal with the votes that are, we don't have to deal with abstentions, right? Somebody, James? Abstentions have never been an issue before. We need not make them an issue now. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, by majority vote, um, Renee Nelson is returned as vice president of the society for 2021, 2022. Um, I'd like to take nominations as secretary of the society. Uh, I will nominate Ashley Jones, Ms. Ashley Jones. Ashley Jones. Ashley. Seconded. I think we've gone about fourth. All right. Do we have any other nominations? Angelique Mullings. Okay. Is there a second though? For Angelique. Okay, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing a second. All right, are there any other nominations for secretary of the society? All right, so we're gonna vote on the secretary of the society. I'm gonna take uh, votes first for Ashley Jones.
Is everybody, has everybody voted? One, two, three. <laughs> Is that it? I think so. Okay. And for Angelique? Oh, wait, so wait, wait. Can everybody down. take them down? Oh, that's me too. Sorry. Yeah, you're still up. Renee is still up. Renee, yeah. Okay. Down. Everybody down? All right. So I'd like to take votes for Angelique. Okay, thank you very much. You can take them down. So uh, by a majority, Ashley Jones is returned as secretary of the ASJ. Uh, I'd now like to ask for nominations. We're going to clap. We're going to unmute and clap right. at the end, Zach, right. because otherwise we're going to be in a state of, it's going to take too long. Um, we're going to take nominations for treasurer of the ASJ. Uh, I will nominate uh, DGF, Diane Golden Frankson. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Well, if there are no other nominations, then uh, Diane, I think you are. Can I consider that Dan Golden Frankson is returned by acclamation? Or without, yes, okay. Unopposed. Unopposed. Thank you, James. Yep. Um, all right. We're now going to take um, nominations for the for mm -hmm. the student rep slash floor member of the board. I want to put up Javier Gordon. Seconded. Third. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are there any other? Are there any other nominations? All right, so I think, I think, have, yeah. I think um, Javier, I think you're um, also, <laughs> okay, David, I think that um, you're returned unopposed uh, to the post of student rep. We now have um, nominations for the other four floor members of the board. I'd like to open nominations for them. Well, and can I ask uh, about this? Because I know floor four floor members are included, but one position is held for Yui Mona archaeologist. That's me, but couldn't that also be Clive Gray since he's the archaeology lab technologist? Is that not how it works? Which Because our full complement should be 11. We've been ending up with just 10 members since I've been involved, and I, I think for a while now. So how, I mean, um, if, if, yeah. We had an archeologist who had got burnt with long committees and didn't want to stand. So we pushed through a line to say that the archeologist is ex officio a member of the society. It is, it was aimed at the lecturer rather okay. than someone who right. works in the office. Okay, okay. no problem, no problem. Uh, uh, I, I understand that, uh, I just, would love it if we had what the full complement of eleven, and it doesn't seem like we'll ever get there if I'm if I'm serving as as president. But anyway, soon come. Okay, so we're open for nominees for floor members of the society. Can I have nominations, please? I nominate John Shorter. I yeah. nominate John Shorter without even any words. <laughs> and Clive Gray. Yeah. Well, can I just make all my nominations? Uh, John Shorter, and Angelique actually, Mullings. Hold, hold no, on a second. Can we, one at a time. One at a time. Hold on a second. Hold on. So you are putting before, a slate forward, Zach? Yeah. I'm going to put a slate forward. John Shorter, Angelique Mullings, Clive Gray, and Prop James Robertson, who's our current JNHT rep. Yes, I agree. I'm putting forward the same, no, the same people as well. Okay, so we've had them first and then second. Is there anybody else that is to be nominated for floor well, member? If, yeah, okay. Does, does anybody else want to put anybody else forward as floor member? All right, so can we consider everybody that we are putting these four persons uh, back as floor members unopposed? Yes. 
John, I Great. think it's very appropriate that you're shaking your head forward, up and down. Yes. Angelique, we're good, everybody? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that concludes the election of the uh, current board, the new board of the Jamaica, the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. Uh, President Zachary Bile, VP Renee Nelson, Secretary Ashley Jones, Treasurer Dan Golden Frankson, Student Rep. Javier Gordon, uh, floor members, James Robertson, Angelique Mullins, Clive Gray, and John Shorter, all <laughs> already up there, um, all returned. I think you've all done, um, no, one change. Yes. You've all Thank done you, David. Student an Rod. amazing yep. job. Uh, Thank you, David, David, thanks for your work over the past year and um, much energy to you all going forward for the next year. That's done. Well, Dr. Susan Francis Brown, thank you for doing the hard job of, of organizing that. You're just, just a remarkable immediate past president and someone that continues to help uh, the society. Uh, David, uh, thank you for, for all your efforts. Your, your efforts cross social media to minuting, uh, to, to just sharing jokes over our WhatsApp chat. So. Don't go anywhere, David. Uh, uh, your, your, your family is within the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. Uh, there'll be a lot of subcommittee opportunities. And, and look, within a year or so, this, this, as we know, these, these boards get shaken up, right? So I'm looking forward to a time that I can uh, fall back into my, what, what did James say, ex officio role as, as just uh, the, the Yui Mona archaeologist allowing uh, new leadership, new energy, new life into our, into our beloved society. So uh, with that, I do wanna thank you all. Uh, please stay attention, uh, please continue your attention, paying attention, I should say, to the archeology span of Jamaica. We're gonna be moving forward in 2021, 2022 with a, a new but old board. Uh, and I think over the last year, we've gotten down to the business of knowing how to work together. Uh, I feel that we're, we're, we're a good team. Uh, we know that we have a handful of, of initiatives that we've got to continue from this last year alongside adding new ones, especially as it relates to uh, archae reviving archeology span Jamaica and ensuring that our members are feeling uh, the benefits that their support for our society uh, results in. So uh, I'm gonna keep my concluding remarks uh, short. Uh, personally, uh, you are my family in Jamaica. Uh, I get, and I know you've all heard me over the last year be, be quite frustrated uh, with, with, with busy schedules and, and pot potential failings along the way to, to, to carry out our work, but uh, you all give me life. Uh, I. I I really appreciate your vote of support. So uh, let's keep it moving. Uh, let's keep digging life, okay? Thank you. Uh, Zach? Yep. Uh, I, I wanted to say that it's probably a good idea to also remind um, our other members that we do need support in um, carrying out these all these these things that we have to do and so if anybody has like a um a desire to help and wants to be on one of the subcommittees um oh, we definitely welcome the um the assistance especially with the research publications um membership outreach stuff like that thank you madam secretary you're absolutely right i'm looking at names right now in this group andrea richards uh, our new member, Dr. Brittany Osborne, Darren Cork, uh, Yolanda Lindsay, uh, you know, we've communicated with one another. If you all are interested in serving actively within uh, the society, please let us know. Uh, we need all the help and all the, the, the bright bulbs uh, that, we can, that, we can, that we can get. So uh, uh, thank you all so much, whether you're new or an old member. Uh, uh, your your support and your input is is incredibly valuable for us. All right, thank you, Brittany.
Uh, any other closing business? Again, I'm just I'm, I'm pleased how the session went today, and I'm I'm, I'm thankful for the group uh, that we have together here. So thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for leading us yeah, through. Thanks. Thank you, so, Renee. Thanks, of, everybody. We're getting a lot Thank of you, love actually. on Twitter yeah. from yeah. Jada and Ken and Kendra. I've been retweeting really? it. So yeah. Oh well, John. <sighs> Congratulations! You us. I think you should unmute so that everybody could clap, y'all. <laughs> and I'm so right. sorry, missed the actual panel. Uh, yeah. Well, you helped plan it. You helped plan it, and then you can't even show up because you're too <laughs> exactly. busy planning other things. Right. Uh, this is the official AGM. AGM. I really, really want to go on record now, just really to extend gratitude to Dr. Z um, Zachary Bayer for the leadership. You know that he has. Uh, you know that 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 he had. You know, taken us um, through this last year. You know, in terms of yeah, any. Yeah. In, the webinars and all of that. Yes, that you work us to the bone and I tell no lie and I complain a lot of the time, but um, it, it really worked out. We have, to be honest, ASG has become more visible. I, I would imagine in this past year alone, just because of your efforts. And of course, you know, you have our support and all of that, but I really, really, really want to express, you know, very, very special gratitude, you know, for taking Jamaican archeology span forward. Well, look, as a non-Jamaican, I, I would have no skin in this game, uh, no stake in this, this practice whatsoever if it wasn't, wasn't for you all. So uh, I think Dr. Allsworth Jones remarked about his life, his nine years or so over doing this job. I, I know fundamentally that this, that this has changed my life, uh, uh, I, I, definitely for the better. So uh, VP? Dr. Renee Nelson, thank you so much. And I won't stop pestering you all. We will be meeting regularly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wouldn't have it any other back. All right. No. Everyone good? I think everyone's up with you some more. Yep. Zach, Diane, congratulations uh, on finishing your first ASJ still sane. I'm here, right? Nice. I'm, I made it. Officially adjourn. Officially adjourn. Write down the time. <laughs> All right. So uh, actually, for the records, two fifty, well past the two o'clock hour that we were supposed to end on, but right. we're better for it. So thank you all today, board members, regular members. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon. That's for sure. And stay Hi safe, guys. guys. You take care. Stay Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Yolanda. Bye, Andrea. Bye. Uh, bye, Brittany. And very nice to meet you guys. Yes, bye, nice everyone. Well, bye-bye.